My name is Ahmed. I'm a research scientist at our lab. We have just released IA Vision, which is a multimodal language model that can understand images and respond in 23 languages. So first, I would like to actually set the stage before going into details, right? So I know our lab is works based on long-term research agenda and very ambitious research path. And the multimodal is one of these paths. Why it is? Well, if multimodal, if we kind of go back to what our field is built around, this idea of building intelligent machines, the first convening for AI in the 1950s always thought of it as separate subjects. So there was computer vision, there was audio, uh, there was text. And that's largely because each task was so difficult, it was kind of unimaginable that you could tackle all of them at the same time. This moment is very profound because as you're describing, we now have this moment where the amount of compute power and the ability to model general representations means we can finally address these together. But it matters because our own intelligence is so multimodal. So that's what makes IA Vision, but also this era of AI, really special and profound for our ability to model the world as it is and not a fractured kind of partial vision of the world. How different it is from building a text on the language model to multimodal language model. <laughs> it was harder than I ex uh, anticipated, to be honest. But with multimodal, uh, what happens is because like images and like and videos, if you move to other modalities, they are, they are so heavy in, in terms of processing that you really write, need to write like very good systems to kind of train and infer these. So I think that was like been, has been the most challenging part for me. The, the infrastructure that is uh, ready for training a text on the language models is not enough to train a multimodal. Yeah. <laughs> not is even correct? Yeah, not even remotely. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Yeah. Why multilinguality is such an important and such also challenging kind of research direction? We're covering 23 languages, which is half the world's population. And this already is incredibly technically challenging because a few components. One is the sheer curse of multilinguality. So when we add languages, we typically have to do bigger is better scaling, uh, which to Sarah's point of the infrastructure required and just the dimensionality of what we're processing as data, this adds a lot of complexity. But the second is images more than anything else differ around the world. For me, this is actually core to machine learning. I think, Ahmed, you and I have talked about this a lot, but this is core to how do you adapt large models to new distributions? And how do you make sure that, it, that we do this in a way that's efficient, that's performant, and that we are representing the worlds that we, we serve when we share these models? This is such a nice, also, research battlefield because so, I do like you call it battlefield. battlefield. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, there are more than one objective that we need to mm -hmm. reach, right? So now we have three different objectives that we want to combine. Yes. <laughs> so what do you say about this challenge? I was thinking it's like multi-objective optimization problem and it's like multi-multi objective optimization problem and it's really hard and maybe other thing, you need to maximize the cross-lingual uh, transfer for this case, because for some languages, you won't have maybe very limited amount of data only, and you need to uh, teach your model uh, to like, answer um, properly for these languages. Did you observe any surprising findings or sort of innovation that you did not expect actually in the beginning? I think the most surprising part for me was uh, from uh, using our approach, Getting a decent model was surprisingly easy. Getting a very good model was surprisingly hard. <laughs> so how do you actually bridge that gap from going from like a decent model to a very good model, which actually makes the makes the real impact in like when people use a, use it and it actually gives them the delight that they're looking for. We experimented with a bunch of ideas. We tried adding a lot of text data to kind of preserve the distribution, and it, we always saw a degradation. And then we, uh, Amit and I, we were discussing one fine day, like, you know, what, what if we try to merge models trained with, on different modalities? It was kind of a wild idea, but it worked. So, and then we kind of ran with it and kind of ran experiments with it to kind of improve it even further. So that, that was a very fun moment in like the research journey for our vision, I would say. That was also very surprising for me. <laughs> Sorry, Tara. Like also how we, Get, like a test it out. Okay, we had this half day that uh, like we can spare for some implementation. Okay, let's test it out. Yeah, it's brilliant. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. I think there's another aspect to this which was really hard with this project, which was 
what is our North Star? Because there's, there's a lot of academic benchmarks for multimodal, but multimodal is actually, there's not as much work on how do we actually measure where we want to go. And so Oliver spent a huge amount of time preparing an evaluation set, which we're releasing along with I am a vision, and I think this is worth talking about because it's measuring more open-ended problems. Yeah. yeah, well, most of the like, academic benchmark measures the accuracy, but when people use the model, they don't, people don't care about, not to say don't care about accuracy, they more care about the response they got. They want to like, really understand, they want the model to really understand their questions and give more like a fluent human preferred na nature, natural re response. So we built a win rate benchmark to, to make out to, Evaluate our model if the model is like really giving response that's more is better and preferred by humans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe I can. Okay. okay. What is your aha moment? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I can add mine. <laughs> um, yeah, after creating this benchmark uh, with, with Oliver, um, we were almost checking all the answers in also our languages, not only in English, but uh, Oliver was checking in Chinese, I was checking in Turkish, and. I was so shocked that the answers are so good. So oh. I couldn't believe because we are generally used to like use models and which is uh, good in English, right? So it's not so surprising. A model can perform really well in English, uh, but when it performs really well in, in your language, which is just used in your own country, it's really both, I mean, you, you really feel proud at that moment and you get happy that what you worked on and what you achieved.